So we've got some uh, fantastic mainstream products like Duke and Qashqai that are extremely successful. And we've got some very hardcore performance products like GTR. And Nismo gives us the opportunity to bring those two together. So we can take some of those key attributes from the Nismo portfolio that we see happening in Japan and elsewhere and take it and apply them over our mainstream products using Nismo as the basis. Well, it's, it's a great opportunity because we, we can take a product like the Duke and we can apply what we consider to be um, motorsport DNA. So we can um, take some of that Nismo attributes and we can apply it to the Duke. And that's just the start for us. Duke is one product out of the Nissan portfolio. I think the challenge with Duke in particular is that it's a very strong and bold product so and it's very successful what we didn't want to do is we didn't want to change Duke we wanted to add another layer to the design we wanted to appeal to the cu customer in a different way um, and that in this case was the motorsport and we needed to take that innovation and excitement and add it into the product we can't just add um, design and style over the top of the product we needed to make sure that the um, design sold the ethos of the Nismo brand itself. So it had to be performance related. We couldn't compromise the um, design. So the, the upper portion of the cabin is very strong. Uh, it's a very wheel orientated design Duke. So it blends itself very well to be in the performance related product. Um, and therefore we focused on lower aspects of the, of the car focusing on the uh, dynamic aspect, the aerodynamic performance, the cooling attributes, focusing on the dynamic benefits that we can offer to the customer. Yeah, I think this, this will appeal to people who want to engage in driving. It's not meant to be a stripped out motorsport product. If we're taking part of that motorsport uh, aspect from the Nismo which is really really a pure DNA and we're taking some of that and we're, we're able to um, add those ingredients and add that taste if you like to Duke. So we, we would start sketching at NDE, we will work on the on the design themes, we'll, we'll sketch from just little doodles all the way through to final execution sketches. We work with our Japanese counterparts, they're designing at the same time. And then in tandem, once a design theme has been selected and it's made into 3D, we're still using the clay, so we, we will develop in 3D over the existing car. And uh, through a process of uh, a few weeks, a few months, we'll hone the design into something that will resemble the very strong character that was selected in the first place. Because this is a Nismo product, it is based on performance. We do add in that um, dynamic uh, development. So the aerodynamics that are focused on motorsport in Japan have had a very large uh, input, especially on the front aspect in the lower front corners, controlling airflow. And then as we see the product develop, we'll, we'll see prototype parts come out. We'll work with Japan um, back at NDE. We'll work with our engineering base in the UK and with Sunderland to develop the product and make sure it comes out to the, the highest level that we would normally expect from our products. And normally a, pro a project like this would, would probably take about 18 months uh, to develop from real concept right through to final production. We could develop that faster depending on what skill base we need, what level of change we're making. Don't forget with Duke Nismo, we've made a significant change to the product. This is not just adding a spoiler or a, a diffuser. We've really um, looked at the product and developed the whole product from uh, the front aspect to the rear aspect and the side aspects. I think the execution of uh, a lot of the surfaces is, is not down to one person, but it's a, it's a combination of 
everyone's involvement. And I think it's great that this product uh, has had a lot of passion behind it. It's had a lot of people that have enjoyed working on it and really making that link between uh, our motorsport division and our mainstream product and bringing that innovation into one of our core products and letting other people taste that innovation and have, have the opportunity to enjoy driving, um, which I hope Nismo will, will show. And so on the, on the existing Duke, all of the upper cabin is carryover and then all of the lower portion, the area where we really need to add all of those aerodynamic and performance related benefits, those are the areas that we focused on changing. So we do have an integrated rear spoiler and then on the front aspect, the lower portion of the front bumper, we've modified the upper grille, we've got these aerodynamic flanks that pull the surface forward, we've integrated the new technology of the daylight running light, we've got the uh, lower diffuser and the wider grille mouth for this extra cooling and performance that we need. Moving as we move rearwards, we've got the wheel arch extensions, the product itself as you can see is is white and the contrast between this area, this element being white, helps uh, give the car more mass and exaggerates the wheel design that we're using. The wheel design itself is uh, satin black which gives a nice contrast to the very powerful um, pearlescent paint. We use a machine finish on the, on the wheel and this will be a part of the uh, Nismo DNA as we move forward. The sill then, the rocker continues down the side of the vehicle wheel arch extensions and we run around the rear of the car with an integrated diffuser and exposed tailpipe. So the Duke Nismo interior, um, we focused on uh, adding those performance aspects that you would expect from a motorsport vehicle, but we didn't want to completely strip the interior out. Um, we still need to maintain that premium design. So we focused on areas that we feel are very motorsport orientated, but the customer will be able to participate with. So we start, if we look at the seats, for example, the seats are much more bucket orientated. They've got the red stitching, which is the signature running all the way through the, um, the rest of the interior, the front and the rear. We've got the Nismo branded stitching into the seat itself. The ambiance in the whole interior is uh, a much darker, much sportier feel, a much uh, more performance related character. So we have a, a dark roof lining, dark A, B, C pillars. And some of the key areas which are, have a lot of bright work on the interior have also changed. For example, the center console is now piano black and, and it helps offset the key character elements such as the Nismo badge. And then other items that we, we feel the customer will really benefit from, things like the steering wheel where we're using the, the real Alcantara um, finish on the steering wheel with the red stitching still running around and the red marker in the center. So you really engage with that driving experience. And then also things like the uh, red tachometer. So we're looking at the, the way you can have that uh, engagement with the mechanical sympathy of the product as well as you're driving. So all in all, that, that really works for, for the customer to take that little bit of uh, that Nismo performance and being able to engage with it uh, as the customer over what already is a successful product in Duke.